Hi, I'm Martin Wilsey. I'm Shemi Galley. And I'm David Keener. And this is the Ireland's Podcast Project. Tonight, the topic we're going to discuss is the subgenre of science fiction known as space opera. Uh, we'll go around the room, start up straight up. Dave, what do you consider uh, space opera in science fiction? Well, gosh, I, I think the definition has kind of morphed over time. So, I uh, hope uh, era, it would be something like uh, Star Wars. Uh, good guys versus bad guys, lots of action, blasters and ray guns and stuff. Uh, in the more modern day, it's turned into uh, sort of, you know, major ideas, vast space fleets, space fleets clashing in the, in the darkness while heroes trying to try to avert disaster. It's become much more larger and sophisticated sometimes. Shane, what about you? I see it as everything big. Everything augmented, everything dramatic, like like Wagner, but in space with you know spaceships and aliens and stars and all that jazz. So um, I think the setting is obviously important, but I think it's like the the huge themes, the queer overarching, um, you know, good versus evil, uh, just swinging romances beautiful music if it's a movie uh if it's a book just beautiful breathtaking writing um so yeah just everything big dramatic and, and loud yeah my my first three novels were actually a trilogy that is clearly a space opera and the key components that i find in the stories that i wrote for uh to fit the space opera genre is it, it's large-scale uh, space warfare. That's the first thing. In addition to that, you have, you know, uh, very melodramatic uh, plots involving risk-taking, adventures, um, uh, relationships between people that are taking in it. Dave's example of Star Wars is really great. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the plot itself takes place under a huge, a huge um, background setting of, uh, a, you know, big space wars. Um, typically, they take place in outer space or on other planets and stuff like that. Um, I, I, it's hard for me to categorize something, a, a plot that takes place maybe far in the future, but all, all of it on Earth, that I wouldn't consider that a space opera. No, I wouldn't either. I think I think the origins of space opera, oddly enough, um, uh, came from soap opera, <laughs> and I think that they're uh, another um, key component in uh, space opera is romance, is uh, adventure, and relationships yeah. within the people that are in the story. So that goes back to some of the early practitioners, like Edgar Rice Burroughs and such. Uh, with the what he called what they called back then planetary romances, um, but uh, I think you're partly right and partly wrong about the soap opera aspect. There was a uh, westerns were big in the, in the pulp era um, and afterwards, and westerns started to become uh, known as horse operas sometimes, which I think took uh, from soap operas. Uh, and so when the when you saw the same type of thing, the the western type plots like Star Wars. Uh, in a, a vast space setting, they went one step further and went to uh, um, space opera. So I, yeah. I think it, I, I think it, I think it went uh, soap opera, horse opera, and and space opera. Others may disagree with me, however. Yeah, even stuff like like Flash Gordon, um, I, I would I would categorize that clearly as uh, space opera. Uh, to to look for generic examples, um, there are so many books and series in particular right now. In the in the universe um, that are clearly uh, uh, space opera. Well, although one thing I will, will kind of quibble about is, it's I feel like it's about vast wars, for example, but it's not military science fiction because it's not so much about the the right. tactics and the and, and the and how many missiles were were ejected from the ship and whether the, you know, it's it's about the vast conflict, but not about the ship handling. Right, it's not it's not the military tactical aspects. Yeah. Uh, for uh, 
for the story. And, and, and you can definitely and, see that in Star you know, Wars. Military sci-fi is completely separate um, uh, uh, genre. Um, now, I believe that you could have a category, uh, you know, how, it depends on how far down you want to slice categories. Uh, Dave and I earlier today were talking about the vast number of categories that can exist for books on uh, Amazon. But military sci-fi is completely different um, in, in key specific ways from, from space opera. And uh, a military sci-fi could be a space opera as well. But space opera doesn't necessarily have military sci-fi in it. If that, if I'm, if I'm conveying it, that, it makes sense to me. I think it's right. more about like what what the emphasis is on how the readers get their thrill. You know, did they get their thrill through like the uh, the descriptions of the military tactics and the weaponry and just like the very the, the expertise they feel the author has in that, or did they get their thrill from you know the the feeling the the sweeping feeling of victory, or you know the uh, the, the the themes that are are so rich and moving. Um, do they get their thrill mostly from that? Um, certainly, you can have overlap, like you're saying, Marty. But I think at the end of the day, it's you know why did they buy the book? <laughs> right, and in fact, the space war aspect doesn't even have to be resolved in a space opera. It can just be the setting. Right. <laughs> is is ongoing forever mm -hmm. i mean it's uh and if you take a book like um ender's game from orson scott card i consider that to be a space opera even though it was primarily uh character driven stories and even though it had some of the tactical stuff associated with um the battles in the end that's not what the story was about, so I wouldn't categorize that as a military science fiction. It was about it was about using children to to win this war, and um, uh, because it was you know a big space battle kind of uh, story, I would consider it a space opera. It's it's interesting because it uh, one of the, the features of the story is it really it backs you into a corner and get in and, and uh, you don't know what's going on until until near the end and then you're like it it pulls the rug out from underneath you uh yeah and i'm still reluctant oddly enough to to give spoilers away from that story yeah, nobody's ever read it. I, I love recommending that book to people yeah i often give it to, to folks as oh you've never read science fiction try reading this because i think it's a good introduction it's um it's not that it's a simple story it's just that it's an approachable story to somebody who's not immersed in science fiction culture. Right. So is it required that space operas, if their books, be this thick? I mean, do they have to be really, really long? No, they don't. No? Short uh, stories could be space opera. I, I would say usually you know who's good and who's bad in the story. It's like it's like a Western in that respect. The good guys are good, the bad guys are very bad. And the you know the action is fast and furious, and the plot twists are fast and furious, and the the there's big explosions and and stuff like that, mm -hmm. right? Now again, I've I've seen some modern space operas that are like that, but much harder core, much harder, uh, you know, very much hard science fiction, and such. So so the the range of space opera, what it can encompass encompass now, I think has expanded quite a bit. Uh, when you look at like stories by um, Alistair Reynolds or or uh, other other folks, um, you know, they're they're a far cry from you know Star Wars or Buck Rogers or Flash Gordon. Yeah, you you take something like uh, Altered Carbon, and the or the Expanse even, and look at the scale of things that. Are, are going on in the characters and the, in the plots and the inside uh, is this in the setting of space war. It's uh, it's a great genre. I love the genre. Hmm. What else? No, what, else? <laughs> what were you gonna say, Chef? Go. What else you got for us, Marty? 
Oh, that's about it. I, I think that um, of all the subgenres of science fiction, that most readers are familiar with the term space opera. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, labeling uh, a story space opera really gives a leg up to the people that are uh, interested in buying a book. It really gives them an immediate um, uh, flavor that they uh, expect. So if you categorize your story as a space opera, people will know what they're expected to get. What do you think, Dave? And conversely, if you classify it as a space opera and you don't give them uh, explosions and, and action and stuff, they're going to be very disappointed and your reviews are going to reflect that. That is correct. That is the trap of, uh, that is the trap of, of categories. Sure, you could put your book in a category that it's got no other, you know, uh, no other books in it. But if you don't satisfy that category, you could get crappy uh, reviews. I have a space opera question, Marty. Okay. I'm looking at your background, and I like your background. And one of the reasons that I like it is because for some indescribable reason, I just want to be there. I want to be walking down that hall, and I want to be living in wherever that is. And I just, I feel like, I feel like there's like part of me that would just very really like who I was if I was in that setting. Not that I don't like who I am now, but um, you know, just to, like even like on steroids, like even more so. So yeah, like, it's like potential. It's uh, like, so like the future too like, of space opera. Why is there But let me get the question out first. Why okay. is there such a like instinctive appeal to uh to settings like that for, for humanity? Well, it's it's clean. It represents the epitome of uh, uh, humanity. That's my word. Epitome. I think it's I think it's like it's like adventure and opportunity, and and it's clean. And it's clean. Okay. Imagine the Roomba that maintains that room. Well, right. no. So, so someone I disagree because uh, uh, one of the features of of Star Wars that the people really remarked on at the time was. Most science fiction was, you know, bright and shiny. Like, you know, think uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. The Star Wars comes out and you got... Uh, corrosion you, and it's dirty. You got uh, corroded ro robots. You've got uh, dirty sand crawlers. Uh, you've yeah. got a, a, a hovercraft or whatever, Luke's hovercraft that's uh, all rusted and pitted and dirty and stuff. And it's like, hey, that looks more real. That, that looks like I'm there. Yeah, it looks like something's getting used. But I like mi a mix of both. It's, uh, you know, there's always people out there with a brand new uh, model car that looks like this, as opposed to my pickup truck that doesn't look like this. But, but one of the things I was picking up from uh, uh, Shay's question uh, earlier is one of the attractions to me of space opera is you get to see far off exotic places. You know, now sometimes it's while the character is, while the protagonist is being chased through them by the bad guys, or sometimes it's like the calm before the storm. Oh, the 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 the, the chasing the, the troops chasing us will be here soon. But in the meantime, look at this beautiful jungle. Yeah, they show you how beautiful and organized and wonderful the space station is, to make you even more upset when it gets destroyed. And yet, you know what? If I was standing in that room in Mari's background, my dumbass would still be like scrolling on my phone after a couple minutes. You know, like it's it's. I think that's there's a word for that. Like you know, you always want to be somewhere else. You don't really want to be where you are, even though once you get to that somewhere else, that destination, then you want to be somewhere else after you make that destination. It's just kind of like a a satisfaction that we'll never get that we're always chasing and i think maybe part of it is that and i think that's why we're not uh um you know proto chimpanzees uh wandering the plains of the serengeti or something like that why we've colonized all, all parts of the earth because we're not content to stay in one valley right yeah, that's true yep anyway thanks for entertaining that <laughs> anyway on that note Go read some space opera, including mine. You'll like it, trust me. And Good. we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for stopping by.